let's consider how to create new sets from old using basic binary set theoretic operations. The kind of picture you should have mentally is of some universal set, a subset A, some other subset B, and the sets potentially can overlap in some or all elements. The simplest of the operations, or one of the two simplest operations we can imagine, is by simply lumping everything together into a bigger basket, into a bigger set. This operation is called a union, and the word union in set theory has a very particular connotation. It represents that mathematical object on the right of your screen. It's represented visually by the bigger blob I've given you, it stands, if you've done any Boolean algebra or logic, for the logical OR operation. And we describe it compactly, succinctly, by A and B with a connecting operation which looks like a smile, a cup face up. We call this A union B in words. And this stands for a consolidated set. It is, in our descriptive notation, a collection of elements, little omega, colon, satisfying the following property. Little omega is in A, or little omega is in B. Notice the inclusion relationships which are put in there. Notice it's a small compact description of what this object is. Bear in mind that in mathematical logic and in set theory, ORs are not exclusive. What this means is little omega can be in A, or it can be in B, or actually it could be in both. So we are using OR unlike in casual language. We are using OR in a non-exclusive sense. In ordinary language, when we use the word OR, we implicitly think of it as being exclusive. This or that, but not both. But in the setting here, we mean either or both. Look, here's the simplest operation for building a more complex set from two basic sets, the union operation. As always, when there are mathematical equations on screen, you should take the time to write them down. Pause, absorb them before you continue. When you're ready, start again. The next of the fundamental operations is called the intersection operation. For those of you who have done Boolean algebra, it stands for a logical AND. We denote it, as you saw in the previous slides, using a frown or a cup upside down. We say A intersection B. And that represents, is defined by, the description on the right. It stands for the collection of objects, little omega, of course, in this underlying universal abstract set, which satisfy the following properties. Little omega is in A and also in B. And if you're looking at our Venn diagram, then we're thinking of those points which are in the sliver, in the lens, which is occupied by the intersection of those two objects. So now the Venn diagrams give us a visual idea of what is going on. As a sanity check, you should ask, well, what if A and B are disjoint? What is the intersection? Well, as you saw on the previous slide, if the sets are disjoint, A here, B here, and there's nothing in common, then the intersection must be the empty set. It's got no elements. The third basic operation is that of negation. In set theory, it's called the complementation operation. In Woolen algebra, it corresponds to the logical not operation. And we give it the following name, description, which stands for a formal definition. The complement of A in words, we represent it by A with a stylized C as a superscript. The C, of course, standing for complementation, negation, the not operation, all of this stands for a set. What is the set? Those elements, little omega, which do not belong to A. Notice that 
we use an inclusion relationship, the membership re op operation, with a slash across it. The slash says that it is not a member. So we're looking at elements omega which are not in A. And all elements omega with the property that they are not in A form the set called the complement of A, and we denoted A C. Visually again, it's as if you've got your abstract space, your universal set, uppercase omega, and you excise, surgically remove all the elements which formed the subset A. What remains is A complement. Again, you should take the time to write down these relationships, ponder them, absorb the notation, the language, the logic, make sure you understand them, draw a picture or two before you proceed. And now as a sanity check, let's try this. Suppose you look at the set which is the complement of A, A with a superscript C. Well, that's a set, and it is a subset of the original universal set. Naturally enough, I could imagine doing a complement of that set. What is the complement of the complement of A? Pause, think about it, scribble, write it down, identify this on your Venn diagram before you proceed. Did you get A? If you negate a negation, you get back the original. That's uh, very loosely. Yes. Two negatives make a positive. Okay. This is the idea. And how do you verify this? Well, let's look at the complement of the complement. Any omega in the complement of the complement cannot be in the complement. But if it is not in the complement, then it must be in the original set. Therefore, every omega in the complement of the complement is in the original set and vice versa. And therefore, the complement of the complement is A itself. With these three basic operations, we can construct very, very rich sets. And in fact, all set theoretic operations can be reduced to repeated operations involving unions, intersections, and complements. Two specific such operations occur often enough that they're worth taking notice of and giving specific names to. And let's take a look at them next. The first of these connotes a difference operation, except, of course, unlike an ordinary numerical difference of two numbers, this is a set difference. Sometimes it's written as A minus B, but it's preferable to use a different separator instead of a minus sign. A minus sign is loaded. It connotes very, very specific numerical things in our brain. So let's denote a set theoretic difference by a backslash. So an A backslash B, in words we will say this as A minus B, it stands for a set which is constructed from the constituent subsets A and B as follows. It consists of those omegas which lie in A and at the same time do not lie in B. Now, notice we've constructed a description which is linked by an AND, and that brings to mind immediately the intersection operation, because that's what an intersection is. It is a logical AND. This is equivalent to saying I must be in A and not in B, but not in B means that I'm in the complement of B, and therefore A minus B is just a short way of saying the intersection of A with B complement. Again, you've seen the little half moon, which visually represents what's going on in this kind of set theoretic operation. I don't know, is that a gibbous moon or something like that? Now, you understand immediately that this kind of operation is not transitive. You can't simply change the order. Um, the analogy is not perfect. But just like we can't simply swap the order of numerical objects that you're subtracting from each other, you also, in general, cannot simply swap sets in the order in which we take set theoretic differences. So, here as a sanity check, verify the following. What is a set B minus A? 
identify it on your Venn diagram. Write down what it is in terms of intersections. And when you're ready, proceed. Now, when you come back, did you get A complement intersection B? And of course, you realize you can get this by simply interchanging the roles of A and B on the definition, on the equation I've given you. If you just swap the orders of A and B, you get exactly B minus A. Now, since A minus B and B minus A are in general different, we can combine them to make something which is symmetric in terms of differences. And this is called a symmetric difference. Again, for those of you who are familiar with Boolean algebra, this connotes a logical exclusive or. The symmetric difference of A and B is denoted A with a little delta and a B, a little triangle and a B, and that stands for a set described more verbosely on the right. It stands for the collection of objects little omega, which are in precisely one of A and B. So either omega is in A and not in B, or omega is in B and not in A. Now the moment we say or, we say, oh yes, that sounds like a union operation. And indeed, there's a union lurking in the background. Since omega has to be precisely one of A and B, it's got to be either in A or in B, but not in both. If it is in A, then it must be in A minus B. If it is in B, on the other hand, then it must be in B minus A. And either of these cases trigger the exclusive or, the symmetric difference. And therefore, the symmetric difference between A and B is a union of the set differences A minus B and B minus A. If you want to think of it visually, of course, it is this conglomerate of elements with the intersection excised from the middle. Now, these are the basic operations. The ones you should really remember are unions, intersections, complements. And it is worthwhile thinking of the set differences and symmetric differences as well. These crop up occasionally in applications. Write these down. Memorize the definitions. These are one of the few things you should hardwire in your minds. And when you feel comfortable that you understand what these concepts are, let's, as a test case, simply go ahead and do a test of concept. 